Hello there and welcome back to another computer science video. This one is all about communication networks inside our data transmission chapter of our EDUCAST specification. Today we're going to talk about communication networks in regards to what's in contained inside a packet. We're going to look at uh, bandwidth and bitrate. We're going to look at network collisions and what happens and how we fix these things. How we route things on network uh, in regards to network traffic and forwarding tables. So without further ado, let's get started. So there's two different types of data contained within a packet and we call these the control information and the actual data itself. The control information provides the data needed for the network to deliver the actual data or the payload. Inside a typical TCP IP packet, the control information will include the source address of where I am, the destination address of where I want the packet to go to, which will all be an IP address, the order number of the packet, so I'm packet 3 of 10, maybe, and the number of packets, which would be 10 in total, so that when it arrives at its destination, everything can be put back in order, and also some error control bits. So that would be a checksum or maybe a parity bit, depending on your error checking. So that's what's contained inside our packet and when we send our packets off what happens when the two packets coming from two different sides of the network collide? The two sets of data are detected on a network simultaneously and this counts as a collision. Once we've detected that a collision has happened the computer will wait a short random amount of time before sending the packets again. And usually, this is what happens when we have to wait a long time for things to happen. The computer will give up waiting and say, oh, it, something must have happened. We need to send the packets again. This is a really, really popular exam question because what the examiner is looking for is, do you have an understanding of what happens when things fail? So now let's talk about routing the traffic itself. When I say routing, I'm talking about determining the path that each data packet takes and ensures that the packets arrive at their destination as expected. The routes the packets take are determined by a routing table and you can find routing tables in memory specialist network components such as routers, switches, uh, bridges, firewalls, even gateways all contain routing tables in order for us to route our packets in the right direction. Now what if you see a diagram like this with a table in your exam and it asks you to work out the forwarding table? Well we don't know what a forwarding table is yet. As long as we know our starting point and we know our destination and we know what nodes we have to go to before reaching the destination we can work out the total cost of getting our packets to the destination. So for the first one, you can see our destination is A and we have to go to node A. Now, that's my start point, so I don't physically have to go anywhere and that makes the cost zero. Now, because my start point is A, my destination now is B and I need to go via C. So from A to C is a cost of 3 and to get to B is a cost of 2. So in total my cost is 5. And the next one, my destination is C, I have to go via C. Therefore I'm already at A so my cost will be 3. For the next one I need to get to D because that's my destination address and I'm already at A and it wants me to go via C. So I go from A to C at a cost of 3. I go from C to D at a cost of 4. Add them two together and it gives me a total cost of 7. And for the final one, I need to get to E and it wants me to go via C. So I go from A to C at a cost of 3. I go from C to D at a cost of 4 and I go from D to E for another cost of 4. So in total that is 11. Now notice I could have gone from A to C to B to D 
to E, but that would have cost me more in total and taken me longer to get there. Forwarding tables are fairly straightforward for your exam. Now we're going to talk about bandwidth. And bandwidth is not a measure of speed, like most people believe, but it's a measure of how much data can fit onto a cable at any point in time. For example, high bandwidth means that there's more room for data on the cable than there is with a low bandwidth connection. Data still flows at exactly the same speed on the cable. It will flow at the speed of electricity or at the speed of light if using optical fiber cables. So you might have heard of something called bitrate before. Bitrate is another way of expressing bandwidth and it's used to describe a software's data transfer requirements. So high bitrate connections are needed when you're trying to send a large amount of data in a short amount of time. If you're still confused, think of it like a motorway. A motorway that has four or five lanes would allow more traffic through over a period of time, more than just a dual carriageway would. Packets on a network behave in a very similar fashion. Every packet will travel at the same speed along the cable. So in your motorway and dual carriageway, everybody's traveling at the national speed limit, 70 miles an hour. The speed of the packet is determined not by the bit rate, but by the speed of electricity or light if you're using an optical cable. A single packet can travel no faster than this limit. This is what restricts us and this is what we're held by. And that's why bit rate is not a measure of the speed of connection. In the motorway example, you can increase the amount of data being sent at a given time by putting more cars on the road, which will ultimately lead to more packets arriving at the destination within a given time frame. And that's why it's important here that we differentiate between bitrate and bandwidth. Bandwidth is the measurement of how much data can be sent at a given time, so how many cars you can put on the motorway, whereas bitrate is counting the number of cars that are passing a given point within one minute, for example. So now let's give this some context in a real world situation. So our application is browsing the web. Would it need a low or a high bit rate? And for what reason? So browsing the web would need a low bit rate because most web pages, even those with rich multimedia content, tend to be small in size. They do send a lot of data out, but it tends to be spread out over a period of time. Also, your connection is limited to the speed of the web server you are connecting to. One exception to this is if the website makes heavy use of video, like YouTube, for example. So a file server would need a high bit rate because file servers have a lot of requests for files arriving and need to process them fast. The higher the bit rate, the shorter the amount of time needed to send each file. Streaming a video conference would also need a high bit rate because video sends a lot of data per second depending on the quality of the video. And then for sending a text file, you'd need a low bit rate. And that's because emails tend to be only a few kilobytes in size. And with that, that's the end of the second video in our data transmission chapter. In the next video, we're going to focus mainly on protocols and everything associated with them. So hopefully you can join me in the next one.